the broadcast team kind enough to join us in studio right now, resplendent in their semi-formal finery, the Hall of Famer Pat Hughes and the MLB All-Star Ron Coomer on the Bernstein and Holmes Show. Hello, gentlemen. Yeah, nice to be with you and Lawrence and Ronnie. Good to see you. We're yeah. getting ready for another season. Not far away. How does it feel knowing that the season gets close? Like for you, Pat, yeah. do, do you still do you still get that that vibe of the, the, that shock of energy going into a season, knowing that the trucks are packing up and headed to Arizona? Yes, I think uh, I start doing more reading more researching and I start writing down notes and I start looking forward to the first few spring games. And um, I'm going to be doing a couple on radio with Ronnie and then I'm doing some on marquee television and then the regular season, Ron and I and Zach are uh, ready to deliver as, you know, as many as 140. Well, I think I'm doing 147 regular season games. So it's a, it's a full slate and, uh, we're looking forward to it, Ron. The team is going to be good, and I think we have some good young players, but I think there are still some uh, uh, – still, there's still some work to do, I think, for the front office between now and opening day. What do you think? Yeah, there's no doubt. It's, it's an incomplete team as of right now, and, and we've known that, though. In listening to both of you guys talk about this process, we all kind of knew it was coming to this period of time before – the Boris clients, the main guys were going to sign. I mean, it's just that's when they have the hammer, so to speak, or the baseball bat in the end, like I got now. But Let the record show <laughs> that he is actually holding a baseball bat with his I, name on it. Well, we've had discussions on hitting, Dan, so I thought. Might as well I would, but that, yeah, that's, that's a nice, so now that's a can, high quality yeah, bat. It Home, is. Homewood it's, bat, baby. It's that's got how we the roll. Coomer name on it, 670 to score. What do you think the chances are of this going up in Coombs Corner here soon? Real good today. <laughs> I, think, I think you should. And the folks at home with bat do a great job of putting bats together. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, very good. Yeah, absolutely. So so what about you, Coombs? Like, do you, like, for you, considering that you go from being a guy that was trying to make it to the majors, you make it to the majors, you have all of these spring trainings. As an announcer, do you still feel excited when the season starts to come back around, the muscle memory kicks back in? It does. I I, I, I look at it this way. I've, I've been going to spring training since 1987, right? So a long time. Um, I've missed one in that whole period of time, the year that I retired from playing or got kicked out of the league because I was no good anymore, however you want to describe that. But, I, you know, that that's – I'm ready for the season to be over. If we're not going to the playoffs the, the next day postseason, you're like, okay, we need a little break. There's a lot of ball games. And then after the first of the year, I'm ready for the season to get started. I'm looking forward to it. As Pat said, we start reading more. Him and I talk a lot more about what's going on in the league. But I just get excited. I, I love going to the ballpark. And I'm a schedule person, right? I, I, I always have been. Yeah. The, the, the having a daily schedule, like you guys have to because of what you do. In baseball, we don't have to, right, in the off season, I like that part of our game. And, and so I look forward to that picking back up again in spring and going to the ballpark every morning. Near the end of the calendar year, we had one of our score video producers ask all of us what we thought the Chicago sports story of the year was. And I think there's uh, many good candidates for that. For me, the size of the Craig Council hiring, that, that story, the audacity of the hiring, the, the the surprise of it, the fact that there was some rumor he's going to go somewhere and it's a team that currently has a manager. Oh, my God, it's the Cubs. And here we are now getting ready to embrace the Craig Council era. And it's going to change your jobs. Obviously, mm -hmm. his patterns are going to be different. You, you, you get used to the way a manager runs a game. And, and Coom, I know over the years, the way you have been – you think about pitching – I, I told you, I had somebody mm -hmm. tell me this, that listening to you broadcast now, that some would say would, that if I said that you were a hitter and not a pitcher, they wouldn't believe you, wouldn't believe me because of how well you understand pitching. And a lot of that is being knowing who's up, why that pitcher's up, who could come in, who might. And now, now counsel's here. You got to sort of relearn some of these patterns. It's, it's part of your DNA, right, Danny? Since, you know, since I was a kid, you're always doing a, your own scouting report, reading a scouting report on what the opposing pitcher is going to do to you as a hitter and the guys that are similar to you in the lineup. 
Well, I do that also for the Cubs pitchers and who they're going to face. So I, I think in that realm, that's just something I always look at. And then I think having a partner like Pat who understands that that's how I look, you know, he sets up the game so well to help me be the best broadcaster I can be. It, you know, that's, those are things that, you know, as a, as a position player, that's what we did. And, and then I have a partner who really helps in all that. And, you know, it, hopefully it comes across and it's nicely to say that, but, you know, we try to, to bring some of that to what the players are thinking about going into the batter's box. So having watched Council now and having, having yep. seen him manage games and understanding the way he looks at leverage, knowing, hey, the game could be decided here. Yep. It's fourth inning, but I can't wait for the eighth. Do you think that's going to be noticeable early on in, in how he approaches managing? It could be. I think Craig is just a very smart baseball man. He really is. He he spent 16 years in the big leagues. Rarely, Ron, was he an everyday player. Maybe briefly with Milwaukee, he played every day. But primarily, he was a backup player, a utility man, great defensive player, good base runner. He could drop down bunts. He could hit behind the runner. Uh, he's just, he was fundamentally a very solid player. And I think he's a smart baseball man. And I think we saw that on the other side, Ron, when Milwaukee and the Cubs would play these last seven or eight years with council managing one side and Joe Madden and then later David Ross on the other. I said many times, when you see these two teams play, you're watching two of the best managers in baseball with council on one side and either Madden or David Ross on the other. And so we have we have great respect for Craig as a an opponent and it'll yep. be it'll be interesting to have him on our side. Yeah, it will be. I've known Counts for a really long time since he was at Notre Dame. Um and we've been friends, you know, through the years for a long period of time. He's got a very different team with Chicago than he had in Milwaukee, he was a, a run prevention. He, I, I love the way he explained this one time. I listened to him talk, and he was a run prevention manager, right, in Milwaukee because you knew the with his pitching staff day after day after day with three number one starters in the rotation and, and maybe the best one-two punch in the back of the bullpen, if he kept the score down from three runs down, there's a good chance one of his guys is going to run one in the seats and you win three to two, you win four to three, you win two to one. I don't know if the Cubs are that team. So what we're going to see is him evolve into doing something else maybe that is going to be the way he looks at our ball club. Very good defense. I don't think we have the same pitching that Milwaukee did back then. Um, so we'll just have to see. But he will leverage the game in the fourth or fifth inning, Dan, to your point, if he feels like that is a situation where the game is on the line. Speaking of pitching and Milwaukee, one kind of under-the-radar move took place within the last 10 days. Corbin Burns, who has been an ace for the Brewers for several years, was traded to Baltimore for a couple of prospects. So he is in the final year of his deal before becoming a free agent. Milwaukee thought, let's go ahead and try to get something now instead of later. I thought that was a pretty significant move. It greatly reduces Milwaukee's strength. And I think, therefore, you know, by just, um, I guess, logic, it gives other teams a better chance to win the division. Agree. He's one of the best pitchers in our game right now. He really is. Pat, I just got a text message from a friend of mine who's a White Sox fan, like a crazy White Sox fan. And this person said, hearing Pat on the radio is so comforting. What's been your relationship with baseball? Like it, now you end up in Cooperstown. I'd, I'd love to know how it's evolved, like your feeling about the game from an insider's point of view now that you've done this for as long as you've done it. Well, I, it's, it's a lifelong love affair for me with baseball. Playing as a kid, listening to games in the Bay Area with Russ Hodges and Lon Simmons, the voices of the Giants, and when you're a young kid, you think the guys that you listen to, these are the greatest announcers ever. Well, it turns out that Russ and Lon both made it to the Hall of Fame. They were two of the greatest announcers ever. And I think I was taking a course in Baseball 101 
from the time I was eight years old, listening to those guys every day. And the teams that they had were so compelling and so exciting to watch. Willie Mays, Willie McCovey, Orlando Cepeda, Juan Marichal, Gaylord Perry. These guys were all on the team, five Hall of Famers. The Giants had a pennant in 1962, but they were a contender every single year, played an exciting brand of ball, and they had great announcers. So that's where I started loving the game. And then, Ron, like you, I was lucky enough to be on some championship Little League teams and Pony League teams, and that makes you love the game even more. And I just love being part of a good team And now, as a broadcaster, I'm part of a very good team also with Ron Coomer and Zach Zaidman, and we're on the score, and it just feels good to be part of a team now that I'm a a senior citizen. What does that mean to you that you're that for someone now? Like those same things that were happening for you as a child, that's now happening with, like I said, this was a White Sox fan that said this. Right. But it's happening for all sorts of baseball fans that you're that voice for them. I don't take that lightly, Lawrence, if that's kind of what you're asking. I I take the job seriously, but I also believe in having fun because being at the ballpark for me has always been having fun, laughing, enjoying the game, and laughing with your your family or your friends, uh, taking batting practice, uh, laughing about a play that you're trying to make in batting practice, a diving catch. You know, you're trying to show off to your teammates. It's about laughing and having fun, and it sounds kind of corny, but it really is a celebration of life to me, the game of baseball. To your point, Lawrence, when you get a young broadcaster come into our booth midseason at Wrigley and they want to meet Pat, the look and the the just the way they – you know, there's a reverence. He's a Hall of Famer. But, I feel but, bad every you know, time I see Pat. I look at him that way, and I'm like, I'm sure he's like, I what's just, this guy looking at me all crazy? Because like, I have that same level of reverence for him. I just get out of my chair and, and go to the back of the booth and say, come on down here and talk to the man. I know that's what you want to do, and I, I just get the heck out of the way because that's what I should do. Um, but it's it's fun to watch guys, young, young broadcasters, come into our booth and want to ask some questions and get some feedback from Pat. And I, I just, it's a great thing. As a baseball player, I did that with guys I played against that were at the top of the list, and now they come in our booth, and it's fun to watch. It really is. I would be remiss if I didn't ask about what I think is one of the most fun giveaways that's ever been conceived <laughs> at a major league park. The Koozie sweater. Oh, yes. Let's go. Just that awesome. whoever, whoever, and I don't know if you were involved in this or they just had to get your okay. Did they come to you and say, Pat, you know that sweater that, that's sort of, that's sort of so ugly. It looks great. It's that, awesome. It, right. That, we're going to make so a version, great. a Cubs color Kuji sweater replica with a Cubs logo on it. It is mm-hmm. known as the Pat Hughes mm-hmm. replica sweater shirt day, April 6th. This is a, th- this is going to be a hot commodity in and around Chicago and beyond. As far as we know. Oh, oh no, no, it will oh, be. No, it will. Oh, no, yeah. I they, they, you. You, oh, you're no, not no. getting out of that, partner. No <laughs> chance. Yeah. So, no, that is – now, that is not an exact replica. First of all, it's a fun thing. So whatever they want to do with my sweater or any of my quality garments is A-OK Quality with garments. Me. There we go. It's A-OK with me. But that is actually similar to a sweater – that I wore for my very first Cubs broadcast with Ron Santo, opening day, 1996. Cubs and Padres. Cubs won the game in extra innings. Mark Grace, a base hit against Trevor Hoffman down the left field line, not the right field line, and that was my first game. But I wore a sweater that day, and at that time, the sweater was only, you know, eight or nine years old. So oh, it was relatively new. Garment. Uh, new, yeah. relatively, new garment. <laughs> it was relatively new. At what did that Sano time. say about the about your fine garments? Oh, he didn't like it. <laughs> he didn't like it. In fact, there there was another sweater that he got so tired of seeing it, he actually <laughs> took it with him, stopped for some reason at a car wash, and left it there. And I said, Why did you leave it at the car wash? I just left it with all the other rags. <laughs> he referred to my sweater as a rag, uh, which, of course, it was, but that's beside the point. 